so I'm Kirsty Hall. I'm an artist and purveyor of Mad Obsessive Projects. Um, this is my current Mad Obsessive Project. This is 365 jars. I am very much in favour of um, kind of does what it says on the tin kind of um, titles for things. So 365 jars is in fact 365 jars. And what I do is every day I go out for a walk and I place an art jar outside somewhere in the environment, um, usually in the urban environment. I have done a couple out in the countryside, but I really much prefer doing them in towns and cities. Because um, the countryside, I don't know, it feels a bit different. Um, I like doing them on people's garden walls and things. So it's really playing with the idea of what is public space and what is private space and kind of pushing the boundaries of that a little bit. Um, so this is yesterday's jar, and this is actually in Brighton, so you can go and look for this one. And I can't scroll up and down from here, so you're just going to have to go and look at the website, which is 365jars.com. So yeah, this project started really as um, a cunningly disguised exercise plan. I wanted to exercise, I wanted to go for a walk every day, and I knew if I made it into um, a, a sort of New Year's resolution that I would do it for about a week and then stop, but I knew if I made it into an art project, I would do it all year, because I'm like that. And so I was like, aha, an art project. And um, the jars were just a kind of practical measure, because they mean that I can put very fragile things outside. Um, but they've actually become quite a, a theme in themselves, and I've now got a whole bunch of people in Bristol who spend their days scanning hedgerows looking for jars and who I've, I've sort of basically trained a whole bunch of people to think that jars equals art and one of the things I like about this project is that a lot of the people who follow it are non-art people often you know this if you're an artist you often speak to the same people all the time you go to private views and you see all the same people and it's you know it, it often feels like quite a clique um, whereas because this is online, I've got a lot of people following it who are not artists, who are just kind of ordinary people. Most of the people I've got who are my regular jar hunters are not art people, they're um, kids. <laughs> I've got a bunch of um, kids who, I think one of them is 11 and his name is Theo, and he found one jar accidentally about three months ago and then roped his whole family into jar hunting and they are now my most avid <laughs> jar hunters. They'll be really pissed off actually that they can't find this one because it's in Brighton. In fact, they were up in Edinburgh recently and another friend had found a jar and we released it in Glasgow and they seriously considered going over to Glasgow <laughs> to see if they could find this jar. Um, for some strange reason, because I am an obsessive artist, I seem to kind of attract very obsessive people. I have another person who was known on the, job, on the blog as Mark the Intrepid Jar Hunter because at the start of the year he was finding lots of jars and he was obsessively hunting for them every day. And my family um, lovingly refer to him as my stalker. <laughs> and, <laughs> but I haven't actually heard from him for a few months so he seems to have tailed off. Um, so I think he got a bit jarred out. But, so what I like about doing this project is that I'm, I'm very keen on the online world. I've been online since about 1994. I consider myself a net native. I have another blog. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Flickr. I'm a lot of places online. And um, I like to say I'm all over the internet, like a cheap rash. <laughs> but um, I like the fact that this project happens in both the offline and the online space. And it, it travels constantly between those spaces. So what happens with the jars is I put them out every day. So I'm making jars and I'm putting the jars out and I document them so I photograph them as you can see. And so I'll photograph them in situ and I'll photograph them either at home or outside somewhere so you can see them in close up and you can see the jar and then I'll Sometimes I'll give extra clues, but they're only ever visual clues, really. So people have to be paying attention to their environment. And um, what I find is I've actually stood and watched people walk right past the jars, even ones that I thought were in quite easy places. 
But most people just don't look at their environment that much. And um, it's been really interesting to me to kind of observe people outside and, and see how people interact with the public space and, and to kind of explore what is private space and what is public space with the jars. And um, one of the questions I get is, is it littering? To which the answer is yes. <laughs> but it's kind of contained littering because I do have people who go and hunt for the jars. And I think the longest that any of the jars has stayed outside is about four months. And what happens with them is either they vanish completely, about a third of the jars just disappear and I never hear about them again. The other two thirds are generally are reported. So there's a form on the blog where you can report your jar find. And they all have the numbers on the lids, so I know which jars have been found and which jars haven't. And I also go back and visit them, <laughs> so I know, so which is how I know some of them are missing. And um, yeah, that's it really. I don't know, apart from anything else to say. How many minutes have I done? <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> can, can you quickly scroll down? Yes, let's scroll down. Yes, I, I put my own art in the jars, so um, it can be, that's a drawing that I did on the train yesterday. Mm -hmm. Not that one, that's a clue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep going down. Right, so those are jars that have been found, um, so people report them. At, on the jars, I, I follow the same kind of, um, oh, what's the word? I do the same thing on every jar, so I, I follow the same routine, so it has the jar number, so it will say today's was jar number 257, I think. And then it has the website name. And then it says usually something like, if you like me, you can take me, or free art for you. Because I found early on, I wasn't putting anything on the jars and people didn't know if they could take them or not. I found that you have to actually really direct people to do what you want. And um, then, on the bottom, it says, please record your find on the website, and then I sign it and date it. So there's, there's, you know, there are directions for people, you know. Originally, I was just going to put them out with the numbers on and the website, and people on Twitter said, no, that won't work, and they were quite right. <laughs> How do you get these um, I Originally, I, I, had, I just had some in the house that I bought for jam and not go around to making jam. Um, but they didn't last very long, so I, I bought some, and then I also got sponsorship from a jam jar company. <laughs> and <laughs> by the very simple expedient of emailing them and asking, um, I liked their website, so I thought, hey, they look like they might be up for it. And I just dropped them an email, and they said, yes, how many would you like, and where should we send them? So I'm still working mostly off their jars at the moment. Oh, they get, a, they get a mention on my blog. I, I wrote a nice blog post about them and told everybody how lovely they were. And they get, um, there's a bit on the sidebar of the blog which mentions them and says that they've sponsored it. But in terms of um, funding for the project, it's mostly self-funded. Um, but I do crowdsource funding a little bit so people can actually sponsor jars. They can sponsor specific days. So if it's your birthday, you can say, I would like, I would like such and such a date, and I will, I will um, give you a mention on the blog, and you'll give me money. <laughs> and that's, it's sort of worked OK. It hasn't worked as well as I would have liked, but, but people also leave donations as well. So I've probably just about broken even, I think, roughly. I haven't added anything to my Flatter account this month, so it's probably gone dead. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes people do that. It's one of those things I tend to forget about, so I forget it's there, and then I go and I find that I've got like 15 euros sitting in my Flatter account, and I get very excited. Um, but yeah, so I, I do kind of encourage people who follow the blog to support it if they will, you know, or if they can. And I do sort of think of this as sort of being sort of installation -y, I suppose, and and a bit performancey as well, I think. I realised about halfway through the project, because I was thinking, oh, I should do some more performance. I haven't done any performance. And then I thought, wait a minute, this whole year is a bit of performance, really. <laughs> but I tend to, my work tends to kind of fall between categories a lot.
you know, I'm trained in sculpture, but I do a lot of drawing, and I think a lot of what I do is drawing. And I do like very project-based work. So, but I do think, you know, in terms of where the art is in this, you know, I think often people think the art is in the jars, whereas, which it obviously is, but I actually think the blog itself is, is the finished piece of work, because that is what I will be left with at the end of the year. I won't have any of the jars, you know, they all go out and people find them. Um, some people find quite a lot of them. The, the jar family that I've got, Theo's family, I think have about 30 or 40 now. <laughs> But I'm encouraging people to kind of re-release them. So the jars go off on, you know, jars go off on little adventures by themselves. So at the moment we're trying to get jars into every city in Britain. And there's 64 cities and we've done about 11 or 12 of them, I think. So I think maybe 13 now, because somebody's just done Norwich, so. <laughs> Which is quite good, because I've got no plans to go over that side of the country. But, you know, I, I realised that the project itself was enough without trying to actually tour Britain. And then I realised that I had all these people who had all these jars and perhaps they could do it. So I'm encouraging them to just sort of post them around the country and things. Thank you. Okay. The thing that I really loved about Kirsty's project when I looked at it, and I've been following it since January the 1st, um, <laughs> Is it is that kind of online offline thing and the, the 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 travel between the two, and I love the idea of people hunting for the stuff and this and the stories that come up through the blog as well. And yeah. I just stopped there because that's a great example of this kid saying I found it in Herefordshire, but I'm going to replant it somewhere else. <coughs> I think it's a really good idea, you know. And that the, the kind of stories that come through it and, uh, are brilliant, and that kind of sense of, of it being a game as well. I think yeah. is really. I realised I realised about a few months ago that I realised what I was doing was swapping art for stories. That that's the actual exchange that's yes, happening. Yes, that's exactly right. Brilliant.